the replacements. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I want to jump on and do a quick video on what dropped in during the week on a topic relating to the replacements. So basically, and in a way, the what, what they're referring to as the replacement is also like a backup plan, right? There's always a plan B. <laughs> if you're not in plan A, right, which is direct connection with source. So anytime that you are separating yourself from that there's a replacement right that comes in now that is depending on where you are what you're doing who you're or what you're experiencing or whatever you're creating the expansion of awareness higher consciousness presence whatever you want to call it um, from that point of view right and so from that point of view we are either in alignment with it or we are not and so anytime we are not we are in going to have the backup plan in alignment with what else there is, right? Which is whatever that you decide it to be, which is the creation of your own experience. And so from there, we get to have the experience, which is the replacement, if that makes sense. So generally, I want to kind of use this as a frame reference because this is what came in for me. And the book talks about when I'm channeling it, they're on all levels, there's different replacements, right? And so obviously, just to come from a place of understanding, it's like you have a full cup, right? And you take some water out or sand out or whatever you have in the cup, you are now making space, right? And so that's like separation. So you're no longer full with source. So you are now um, taking some out, which represents, right? We're using this example, separation, right? And so from there comes a replacement because everything is whole. It's all one. Everything is there. Now with the expansion of awareness, right? We bring in other things to take up that space, right? Which is our experience, right? Because if we're not being one and true, whole with source we are being separate from it which is the divide of consciousness from one to the other the extremes of consciousness which is awareness of itself from that place that you're seeing it from so you're either seeing it from the human version of whatever that is suffering anger hatred all the emotions all your thoughts all your beliefs we're seeing it from love which is source which is the whole existence right and so from not that it's above but and and below but it's just the the realization of where you are at on that perspective on that stream of consciousness which is its own awareness right and so from that point of view what we're looking at is based on where you are what's been your experience the past bring it into the current moment the present experience of where you are and so everybody's experience and journey is different, right? We don't all have the same path, same experience, our same view. Everybody's view is different because we've had different experiences, right? And we don't, again, we don't have the same thing. And so based on that, right, the experience in it of what we are having is going to be based on you, right? And so that is either your truth right because that's been your experience of the truth which isn't really the true true which is source which is love it's the truth of the illusion the false experience but it's true to you because you've had the experience and so depending on where we are on that we're either in the experience which is this is true and i fight for that truth or you're having the experience and you're the observer which is stepping back from the actual experience and observing it with non-attachment. So you have the non-attachment experience of the view, which is you're viewing it like on the screen, like the play, or like if you're at the movies, right? So you're either looking at it from that point of view, 
where you're actually in the play on the stage in in the movie <laughs> playing it right and that's two different views whereas where are you a source you're all one you're a whole you're seeing it from all different perspectives right but when we're separate we don't see it that way at all we see it on, from different perspectives from where we are which is part of our journey right being here in the human form right and so relative to that we take up the form to be a part of the body to have the experience and the body is already created it's incarnated right and so what that means is that everything is here for you already right all the past all the memories everything and they just come back in as we are evolving into the physical form right of what we've created from prior to coming in and then what's already here because we take up the body of the parent which also comes into play with the experience right we have that part contributing which helps bring it more into the physical reality which we then play out in our own lives right because if you can see it from the point of view where we're kind of repeating you know things that our parents have done you know because we are learning in that environment we're taking that up where it's becoming a part of us and we have that experience which creates who we believe we are as the person right and so we take up that frame of reference which then comes to where we are into like identity and ego and that perspective and its own awareness of what actually is true and then we are then cut off from the higher consciousness <laughs> at that point which is a separation right and so it's the view of the existence being separate of the one true source which is whole on all levels right and so in that is the ego and so i wanted to come and because this is how it dropped in as far as the ego but to get there i wanted to kind of explain to touch on a little bit of where all that comes from and so you have the understanding where i'm coming from to try to explain it because a lot of times we can't understand uh the other side you know from here if we've not remembered who we are how it works or what it is that we're doing here why we're here or who we are in fact and so we have the divide which then creates the the ego right that's a it's a replacement of source right it's self-serving not serving for all right and so the ego is self-serving and so whenever you are separating yourself from source no matter what level of dimension or reality you're on you are creating a separation if you're not in alignment and then there is a replacement form for that right so because you cannot going back to the cup scenario since everything is whole you cannot take out something without putting something there in its place as a saver right which is also a timeline right so the perspective and awareness and everything works as a whole unit right and so you cannot take out like a piece of a puzzle right it's not whole if you take a piece out and never replace it or put that piece back in it has to be it is whole right so anytime you are taking something out or separating it from the whole which is one there's a replacement piece for that and so that's all been thought of thought of and thought out of by source who created it all right it's all perfect it's all divine it's ev everything and all things are the way it should, should be there's nothing wrong with anything which is another topic that i can get to because somebody had talked about that you know people are asking you know you know whatever happened to this or you know this is wrong but not, nothing is wrong everything is right everything is perfect everything is divine everything is choreographed and you know orchestrated you know we just aren't aware that it is because we have this little mind that we are seeing it from perspective of the human version form which is related to our dna our struct structures our belief systems our awareness of where we are in kind we can't see the whole picture we can't see beyond our self right because people have said oh you can't see behind your nose right <laughs> beyond your no your own nose and that's true we can't see beyond what is really going on here we only see what is in our own frame of reference right and it's kind of like a bubble if you will right so the frame of reference refers to who we are as a, a being our, our construct what we believe and create in our own little bubble in our world and we don't see out beyond it until an awakening comes to where we can see it right 
and that's divine knocking on your door to wake up out of that construct, you know, which is on different levels you know, throughout your journey. And so as we evolve, we are seeing and breaking down these belief systems and illusions and constructs that we have. Now, the ego is a replacement of self, right, when we are separate from self. So you need that something there to hold that space and awareness, right? And so you're either, either, it's ego is either serving itself or you're in one with source, which is divine, you're for all, right? And so you're either in it for yourself, you're in it for, for everyone, right? And so a lot of people may know it by that um, way of speaking it, about it, right? And so, so whenever we create the separateness from ourselves, the ego starts taking form and place, which is our belief systems, the construct. We think we are, and we believe it, right? We become an attachment to it, which is form, right? Because we always have this attachment relating to something else other than ourselves, which is reaching out to whatever it is that's there in our environment or in our awareness. And so either, again, we're either, atta you know, attached in one wood source, right? But being in the human form over time, we kind of forget about that. And because other people in our situations in life is in our environment, in our space, in our awareness, then we tend to attach to that, you know, and trying to live and navigate the world from that point of view, if you will. And so then it's actually the attachment to the illusion <laughs> that we're living in, that we believe it is, that it's true, when actually it isn't true, it's only true to you because your experience is this way and this person's this experience is this way. And so we should never say we from that point of view because it's not always about um, what another person has that is your experience and what is our experience is going to be different experiences, right? If that makes sense. So it's only you who has your own experience. And so, I, you know, it's kind of like I, I'm... I'm very conscious about wording what I'm trying to express or what I'm uh, signing up to, you know, as far as, you know, how other people are relating and trying to connect with me. So like when, when, for instance, you know, a person is talking in reference to themselves, like if you're in a group and then somebody says, instead of using themselves, this is their experience. They're saying, well, we, like they're ex thinking that everybody's having the same experience, but we're not. We're having different experiences because what one person will experience will be different from another. Like if you go to a movie, you use this experience before this example, and one person laughs and one person cries at the movie, it's two different experiences. And that's the way it is in life, right? And so that applies to all perspectives, mm -hmm. right? So we should never always, never like say we, <laughs> because our experience is our own experience and what we're seeing or coming from is our own perspective, right? And so to include somebody else is saying that they have the same experience when we use the word we, which doesn't exist, right? When you're separate <laughs> uh, from source, the only time that applies is when you are with source, in alignment with source, and they are, right? Because then they have, you're all one, right? It's whole. So, but anyway, the drop-in was about ego as a replacement of self, um, a.k.a. source. Uh, and when we create separation of ourselves, the ego develops, right? And so then there it takes a, um, a life of its own. Now, I'm sure you've had your own experience with ego and other people. You've seen them have their experience with ego and how they're being. And, and it's not about, it's not a bad thing, right? And so that's why I want to bring to the table that ego is not a bad thing because there's always a replacement, a plan B for you. And so everything is there for you. Everything is divinely orchestrated. Everything's been thought of, like I said. And so it is not that ever that you are alone. You have all constructs there for you in your existence along the journey, right? And so try to look at it from that point of view as far as the ego. Um, and although would the ego come suffering, right? Because it's self-serving, right? And it's not that you shouldn't be um, moving from a place of yourself. It's just you don't want to be in the space of ego, right, which is self-serving. And so you, there's a difference between a person who lives in ego and a person who is, you know, being for themselves, right, because somebody who never works on themselves, right, 
we have to be for ourselves first and then others, right? And that's how we serve, right? So if we don't do that, then we are never for ourselves, right? <laughs> right? So it's different. There's different perspectives from that point once you get into it a little bit more deeper, but this is just generalized in topic. What I want to talk about as far as the replacement. Um, so when you have your ego, it's self-serving. And so it actually is just there for itself regardless of other people. So let me just put it that way. Now, if you are not in ego but you're you're doing stuff that you want for yourself it's also for the good of others right and so there's a difference there right so you want to make sure you have that understanding um, because ego is about self-serving and only cares about self it only does what it wants and you know whereas you know you may be working on yourself self-development you know work you know and then outwardly is a difference because the better you make yourself, the more better you can be in the world, right? And so there's the difference, right? And so that relates to anything else other than that's what's going on because how we are in the world, how we're showing up is how we're reflecting out into the world and we contribute to the world, right? And it's not really about being selfless because we have to be aware of where and what space we're in in order to be here so we know how we are showing up because if we have no idea of where and how we're showing up then we can't change it right <laughs> so it's the awareness of self um, i don't want to say preservation but awareness of that how you are being in the world to show up in the world to be better right for others and yourself right to contribute in a way that is going in the right direction, we'll just say, right? Instead of going out and robbing a bank and going out and do this and then going out and do that, right? We want to have self-awareness, right? So there's, that's how, I, okay, that's how I want to explain it. So self-awareness, right, is different than ego, right? So self-awareness is more about, it's about self-preservation, but it's also about contributing and being conscious and being aware of who you are and what you're doing and how you're showing up in the world versus the ego. The ego is a construct that we create, that we live in, that is selfless, selfish, right? Selfless as in being selfish because it only cares about itself. And when we're in that perspective, we go on and we don't care about what we're doing. You know, we're, we're wreaking havoc everywhere we go right? without even thinking. So that's an unconscious awareness, right? And so that is on the stream of consciousness that's separate from source, which is the awareness of itself being selfless. Because the self, and this can be confusing because it's going a little bit deeper, the self, right, is the one is source, right? There, it's the true self, the true source, right? So you have that, but when you are in the selfless, which is separate, the absence of source, the true self. When you're in the ego, it is the selfless, right? It's not selfless, but selfless, right? Absence of the self, the true self, right? Which is in harmony with itself, <laughs> if that makes sense. And it's a little confusing how it's um, shared uh, from the other side in the channeling in the book to have that awareness. And there's, so I'm trying to explain it. And then, so trying to break it down into little bits and pieces here for you to understand, um, you know, the channelings in the book, uh, the way through that I'm writing, uh, you know, whenever you have the ego, it's, and I know Buddhists talk about selflessness as in um, more about caring about others than yourself, but that's totally different, right? And so that has nothing to really do with what's, how this is being explained. So the ego is selfless, not selflessness, right? So just to try to keep that, you know, separate from that teaching. But um, whenever you are, you know, stepping out of alignment, just to kind of recap and bring it all back together, um, whenever you have your separation from source, whether that is, you know, healing, whatever aspect of life that you're working through, going through, dealing with, whether it's, you know, being directly connected to source or separate, you then create the separateness. And then whatever that is for you, 
within your life situation or even on the macro level, you know, so it could be micro macro. And so there's always a replacement, a backup, right? So for whatever you choose, because you have choice, which is your free will, right? And there, and then it's done. That's free will is done, right? And once you choose that, um, then the course of action comes, which is either the replacement or the, the one is with source. So whatever you're choosing, if you're replacing the divine connection and healing through source, you know, if you're doing energy work, healing and meditation and bringing that down, you know, and following higher guidance on how to make your life healthy, right? Whether that is maybe you've come into an illness or an accident or whatever that may be, we can connect directly to source and open the channels and receive healing. Many people have done that, you know, and they've received on how to heal themselves if we're paying attention and meditating and working on ourselves, right? And so we can change and transform our lives on many different levels. However, if we're separate, you know, there's going to be a replacement come in. So that's where people would replace divine healing, um, instantaneous healing. And I've had that myself, instantaneous healing from my death experience. Um, so whereas if you are not divinely using the energy and higher consciousness for healing and asking that from source or your guides or angels, then you are using a doctor. <laughs> and so then it's convoluted healing, right? Because you have to go through somebody else. That's your replacement self. And this is just an experience, uh, example for you, right? So whenever you have like certain life experiences, if you're not doing your divine purpose, right, then of course you're going to have a backup plan, which is a job or a career, right? And so everything is there for you. Everything is set up perfectly. There's either plan A or play B, and it's what you're choosing. And that's how you're creating your experiences that you're living. And so if you're not doing one, you're doing the other, which is the opposite stream of consciousness in its own awareness, which is being created for you. So you can create anything that you want to have in your experience, and that is your will, right? That's your choice, you know, your free being. Um, to create that and so whenever you have that awareness then you can make other and better choices in your life on all different streams of consciousness so hopefully that's been helpful if you have any questions drop them below if you want to set up a one-to-one -one session um, definitely reach out um, I have the website and then the email the information is down below and definitely um, take a look at that and see how that relates to you in your life and contemplate um, and again um, thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys. Like, share, and subscribe. It does help other people and the channel to grow um, if they are in need of the information to help them out. You know, it, it may not help you, or maybe it does help you. It may help somebody else. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Happy journeys.